When the whole AI craze started a couple of years ago, I was one of the early adopters. I jumped on board immediately because I recognized how powerful some of this technology could be, especially the large language models, the chat assistants. So things like ChatGPT, Claude, Gemini, Llama. I use all of these tools. I use them on a daily basis, and I'm constantly amazed at what these tools can do. Now, recently what I've been doing is I've been going down this rabbit hole of seeing if AI can help me trade better. And by trade, most of you guys know that I day trade, right? I trade the markets. I trade mainly options, but I'll trade some futures and some stocks as well. And recently I had the idea of, I was going to backtest a certain strategy that involved TQQQ, which is the triple QQQ ETF. It's the triple NASDAQ, meaning it's a three X leveraged ETF, meaning when the NASDAQ goes up 10%, TQQQ goes up 30%, right? Because it's triple leveraged. Of course, the inverse also happens if the NASDAQ goes down 10%, TQQQ is going to go down 30%. So, you know, it's a very highly leveraged, kind of a dangerous product to trade. But the reward, the potential reward, if you get moves right in this thing, could be great. But I need to test this. So what I decided to do is I asked ChatGPT, could it help me with a script? So this is what I initially asked. And this is a very long chat log here. I'm not going to show you the whole thing, but I will show you the finished script. But initially, I asked ChatGPT, hey, ChatGPT, I want to create a trading strategy using TQQQ and SQQQ. TQQQ is the triple leveraged QQQ ETF. SQQQ is the inverse triple leveraged ETF. So one is a bullish ETF, one is a bearish ETF. And I said, I want to use the daily chart of QQQ using the following exponential moving averages, the 8, 13, 21, 34, and 55, based on the EMAs, the exponential moving averages, I will get long either TQQ or SQQ. So I didn't give it a lot of, to work with here, but I gave it a little bit. You know, I gave it a basic strategy. For those of you not familiar with trading, those exponential moving averages that I gave it, these are these lines. So I have five exponential moving averages and basically when the exponential moving averages are in their normal kind of pattern here like this, stay long TQQQ. But when they flip over to where they're inversely, uh, you know, the, the other direction, when they have this crossover here, get out of TQQ and instead get long the inverse product, which is SQQQ. So that is the strategy that I gave ChatGPT to work with. And at the time, I really didn't know what ChatGPT would do because I hadn't really explored a, a lot of this kind of a data analysis, data science stuff that a lot of professional traders do use. But, you know, working with ChatGPT, it basically told me, hey, would you like me to write a Python script using the uh, Pandas library and the Y Finance library? So yeah, I, I did want it to do that because I didn't know what those were and it wrote me a basic script. Now, I kept working with ChatGPT and kept modifying the script, adding things to it. And eventually I got to the point where the script looks something like this. Let me go ahead and run the script. And you can see what it does. It generates a graph. If I move my head out of the way, I get a graph of buying and holding QQQ, which is the blue line. So that's the benchmark. That's just the NASDAQ. And then what if I buy and hold the triple QQQQ, right? The TQQQ, right? That's the orange line. So that's the leveraged product. But what if I employ a strategy using the EMA crossovers where I either buy TQQQ or SQQQ depending on the EMAs? Well, that's the purple line. And you can see I do quite a bit better than either of the standard buy and hold strategies. And then in the terminal output where I ran this, you can see it gave me some metrics here. So these are performance metrics that I initially asked for. And then later I wanted to be able to verify that all of this information is correct. And the only way to verify if everything is correct is if I have the trading dates, the entry dates and the exit dates. That way I can go back and manually verify, hey, that trade, yeah, that worked out exactly the way the back test does. So I asked it to also print me out a trade log and not only print it out to standard output, can you also make it save it to a CSV file, right? So I can import it into a spreadsheet. And, you know, I kept adding pieces and kept adding pieces and working with ChatGPT until finally it gave me the script. And if you want to see the script, 
in totality here. And let me go ahead and open this and zoom in. This is the script that ChatGPT wrote. Now, there are some libraries, some Python libraries you need to install in order for this particular script to run. You need pandas, yfinance, numpy, and matplotlib. Those are the four big ones. What are those? Well, the most important one, yfinance here, this is pulling information from Yahoo Finance. So it's just collecting data that's published on the Yahoo Finance website. So it's probably the best free source of information on market data is Yahoo Finance and Y Finance is a library for that. Uh, Pandas, what is that? Well, that is used for uh, uh, data science. Uh, it's basically used for data manipulation and data analysis. Matplotlib is what gives me the nice graphs, right? The plots. So that was, you know, the, the three lines on the chart, right? That was Matplotlib. And then NumPy. NumPy provides support for large uh, multi-dimensional arrays and matrices and things like that. Again, it's a, a data science thing. And I am not familiar with data science at all. I'm really not that familiar with Python as a language at all. You know, this would have been tough for me to do without the help of ChatGPT. But with ChatGPT, I was able to put this together, you know, in no time at all. Realistically, I mean, the first script did work. And so it only took like two minutes for me to ask a question and get a working script. Now, I spent a couple of hours, you know, enhancing the script, modifying the script with ChatGPT. But again, this was such a big time saver since I I have no expertise in this field at all. One other important line here near the top, I uh, have this MPL use TK AG. So you need to specify a graphical toolkit. If you're going to have the plot, so if I rerun the script here, if you're going to have a plot using matplotlib, right? This is a graphical application. It needs to know what kind of toolkit. Uh, so you could use something like Qt5 or Qt6 or TK, which is what I use because I already had it on my system. So uh, one of the requirements, if you didn't have that on the system, is do a Pac-Man dash capital S TK on an Arch based system. That's the just standard TK toolkit. And then for those of you wanting to set up a Python environment here, you also, you know, because on Arch you have to set up a virtual environment, do Python dash M V E N V for virtual environment and then your venv uh, you know directory whatever you want to name it for me i just named it venv i'm not very uh, original there right and then once you create this virtual python environment you know if i do an ls in my home directory whatever you named the virtual environment you should have a directory there now so i do and now that i have the virtual environment installed you know to work in no longer will i use the command Python to do anything with Python or pip to install things with pip. Now I will use the virtual environments version of Python and pip. So venv in my case, because that was what I named the, the uh, folder slash bin slash Python is, you know, the Python command. And then the same thing itself pip would be the pip command. And here you would need to go ahead and install all of the libraries that you want installed to that virtual environment uh, that's going to run this particular script. In this case, I would need to install things like Y Finance, uh, NumPy. Uh, what else did I need? I needed a pandas and I also needed a matplotlib. So those are some of the things I actually think those are the only four things I needed for this particular script. And then, you know, from there, it was just making minor tweaks. Uh, some of it I could do myself. I'm not a complete noob when it comes to Python code. For example, I could modify things like the ticker symbols if I wanted to try some different ticker symbols other than what I chose or uh, different time frames. Uh, in this case, I'm starting in January of 2016. Now, I did have to be particular with this time frame because uh, one of these products, I believe SQQQ, uh, did not exist before 2016. So if I go back even further, I'm going to get some problems with the script because, you know, one of the tickers here just didn't exist. Then it calculates our exponential moving averages of the periods that I gave it, you know, the five different periods. And then our signals is when all the EMA uh, averages, the exponential moving averages, when 8 is above 13 and 13 is above 21 and 21 is above 34, yada, 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 when the MEA ribbon, you know, the five are aligned in that particular way, and then the QQQ price is above all of them, 
it's a bullish signal. So we get long TQQ. And if the opposite happens, we get bearish. We get long the SQQQ. You know, I'm not a Pythonista, but Python code is actually pretty easy to deal with. You can see in this case, I'm starting with $10,000 for the initial capital. And, you know, then we get our trade log that gets created. So that's where it logs all of the trades and saves them to a CSV file for me. And then finally, we get the trade metrics here. And then finally, at the very end, we get all of this stuff, the plot. So that is the map plot. That's the graph. And, you know, in the end, I end up with something rather nice for not spending a lot of time with it. And of course, I'm probably going to do more of this along the way because I am fascinated by this stuff. I'm fascinated because of the technology with the large language models. I'm fascinated because I don't mind scripting and programming. That's interesting. I'm also fascinated by the money aspect as far as the trading aspect. If I actually full screen the trade log, you can see, you know, we started with uh, $10,000 on January 5th of 2016, and at the end of the back test, we ended up with $419,000 just following a, a very simple set of mechanics, very simple trading rules. So yeah, it might be something I actually employ in my trading. Of course, this is not my trading channel, right? <laughs> this is the free and open source software Linux channel, and I think you guys should maybe Play around more with some of these chat assistants, especially with whatever projects you have in life. And maybe it's not, you know, doing any kind of data analysis as far as backtesting uh, trading strategies and things like that. But whatever it is that you want to do, I think you will be amazed at what you can go and ask a tool like ChatGPT or Claude or Gemini or any of these large language models. All right, you can get really up to speed quickly on some of this stuff that you probably thought either you just didn't have the mental capability to actually do it yourself or just the willpower, right? Just the, the drive to actually do it yourself. Because some of this, you know, I was thinking, well, it's going to take me a long time to get up to speed on some of this uh, uh, data science kind of, you know, all these uh, data science libraries and Python. But really, I'm already way further ahead than I ever would have been without tools like ChatGPT. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Matt, Steve, 40 Millimeter, Cap Caveman, Darloff, Lee, Jersey Killer, Mark, Methos, Arian, Paul, Peace, Arshmador, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, War Gentoo, and Ubuntu, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon without these guys. This quick episode about ChatGPT and Python and Beating the stock market, it wouldn't have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen, all these names you're seeing on the screen right now. These are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux, free and open source, and Python, right? subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.